This presentation is about dry powder inhaler formulation development of crysine for the potential treatment of respiratory related diseases. Asthma is a common inflammatory disease associated with an airway hyperresponsiveness related to T helper cell type 2 immune response. Many studies were conducted to examine the crysine effects on airways related diseases which revealed that crysine can reduce the inflammatory cells count, interfere the inflammatory process and mucus production, and it can change the allergen response towards T cells. Although flavonoids have a decent anti-inflammatory effect, they have poor solubility and low oral bioavailability in the serum due to the limited absorption and fast elimina elimination. Therefore, formulating inhalational crysine may enhance the bioavailability and hence deliver a sufficient amount to the site of action due to the absence of first pass metabolism. This research aims at evaluating the impact of the carrier and the drug carrier ratio used in the drug powder inhalation, in, inhaler formulations. According to pulmonary drug delivery, the particle size should be between 1 and 5 micrometer. The normal antisolvent crystallization method left crysine with bigger than 5 micrometer aerodynamic particle size. These particles have a tendency to deposit out in the upper respiratory tract. However, the crysine prepared by pole milling method and sonar crystallization, the particle size was smaller than 5 micrometer and bigger than one micrometer. The sympathetic was used to measure the particle size of the dry powder. For the pre preparation of the formulation, according to previous studies, crysine was effective when one micromole dose was used. Hence, a five micromole dose, which is equivalent to 1.271 milligram, was used to deliver sufficient and effective amount of crysine to the lungs. The drug carrier ratio can affect the FPF results as previous studies refer to an increase in the FPF by increasing the drug amount to the carrier. Therefore, two different drug carrier mixing ratios were used, 1 to 67.5 and 1 to 10 ratios. On the other hand, the carrier particle size and the morphology have an impact on the TPI distribution profile. Thus, two different carriers were used, the lactose and the mannitol. The cyclone vortex mixer was used for the mixing and the mixture was left in the desiccator to rest for three days before the uniformity study. 10 samples were taken from various levels of the mixture. Every sample was dissolved in 10 ml of the HPLC prepared mobile phase and analyzed using HPLC. The relative standard deviation, the RSD, was then calculated and the mixing method was approved when it was less than five. The drug aerodynamic characteristics were tested using the NGI. Each sample, three runs have been performed and analyzed using HPLC. Then the Copley data analysis software was used to analyze the total delivered dose, FPD, FPF, GSD, and MMAD. The crysine prepared by bone milling method and sonar crystallization particle size was less than five, but bigger than one micrometer. Thus, these particles were chosen to be mixed with two different carriers at two different ratios and was tested using the RSO1 inhaler device. Table one shows the optimum mixing time was five minutes for drug manitol formulations according to the RSD value. The RSD was higher when the mixing was performed for longer than five minutes, which suggests that the drug and the carrier were not mixed properly and were getting segregated. However, the optimum mixing time for the drug <coughs> lactose formulations was 10, 10 minutes as the RSD value decreased with time. The crysine 
aerodynamic behavior, which is the FPF and the MMAD, are presented in Table 2 for pole milling samples and sonar crystallization samples. Table 2 shows that for pole milling samples, the highest FPF <coughs> with manitol formulations was 8.6%, which is formulation 1, while it was 10.3 when lactose was used as a carrier. The MMAD of both formulations was about 3.8 micrometer, which indicates that 50% of the particles are less than 3.8 micrometer. A similar trend was observed in the sonar crystallization samples. The highest FPF was 27, was observed with lactose formulation in formulation 6, compared to 14% for mannitol in formulation 5. With MMAD of both formulations below 2.6 micrometer. The data of the deposition profiles of chrysine demonstrate that the formulations F5 to F8 had higher deposition profile than formulations F4 1 to F4 at same flow rate. Also, the results show that MMAD for formulations F5 to F8 was around 2 micrometer lower than F1 to F4 formulations, which was around 4 micrometer. These findings agree with the previous study showed that the particles produced by ultrasound comparing to the ones obtained by spray drying or milling are more suitable for inhalation application and have a better aerodynamic behavior. This is related to the sonocrystallized particle surface smoothness and the decreasing in the cohesive and adhesive forces. Additionally, the data show that the formulations contain 1 to 67.5 chrysine carrier ratio have an improved in the FAF. This improvement is due to the low aggl aggl agglomeration of drug particles with a higher ratio of carrier giving the drug a better chance to disperse on the carrier surface. This data agrees with the previous study reported that the butazenide and salpetermol formulations had higher FPF results when low drug concentration was used. In addition, the results of the formulation illustrate that lactose is a better carrier than the manitol, which can be attributed to the variances in the particle size of the lactose comparing to manitol, Previous studies revealed that decreasing the carrier particle size has improved the FPF results of the formulation. Also, it can be due to the manitol high surface energy comparing to lactose, as studies showed that lower surface energy might reduce the drug carrier interaction, which in turn will promote the detachment of the drug carrier. To conclude, inhalable chrysine particles were prepared using two techniques. Later, dry powder inhaler formulated by blending these chrysine particles with mannitol or lactose at two various ratios. All formulations showed an increase in FPF results with increasing the carrier concentration. In addition, the formulations indicate higher FPF and lower MMAD when the lactose was used as a carrier. And overall, the sonic crystallization formulation samples had higher drug deposition with acceptable MMAD at same conditions. These results demonstrate that the sonic crystallization technique minimized the chrysine particle size and improved the drug deposition profile. Thank you.